Today, I want to talk about a few things that are going to take your upcycle close to the next level. Upcycles become a really popular trend with some of the most popular videos being really simple stitches, methods, and materials that look great at first, but may not end up lasting in the long run. Upcycling first and foremost is meant to keep clothes out of the landfill and create something that won't fall apart after the first wash. So first I want to talk about materials. When you upcycle, you're going to want a really sharp needle. Whether the fabric is thick or thin, the less effort you exert getting your needle through the fabric, the better. So you don't have any unintentional snags. So this needle looks like it's going to be great for our purposes. It's pretty small, thin, and sharp because we want to be wary of using a needle that's too big. Here's an example. This hole was made by just one stab with this bigger needle. Eventually that initial hole could grow and ruin my work. So here's that new sharp thin needle on the same shirt and it's perfect on the thinner fabric. It doesn't leave behind a big gap. As you can see, even fiddling with this, we aren't creating a huge hole. This is going to be a much better choice of needle for this project as opposed to something too big. This is the size difference of what I had. So if you are going to use a gigantic needle, I'd only recommend it on denim or something that's going to be able to hold up against that type of size. And again, make sure it is super sharp. It is always a good idea to make sure it's a sharp needle. Also, just because you don't want to stab yourself, kind of like a kitchen knife, your likelihood of injury is heightened with a dull tool. You may also want to consider a stabilizer for your projects. I use this sulky printable water soluble stabilizer and it works great for projects like this. I love this brand. It's great. I highly recommend it. It's a two layer sheet, kind of like a sticker. You print or draw your design on the top textured side that kind of feels like fabric and then peel the back away and put the sticky side down on your work. It's going to give the fabric a little extra stiffness while stitching and comes with the added bonus of not having to draw your design directly onto your fabric. You just stitch directly through the stabilizer and your fabric, and then you can soak it in water to remove the solvy sheet, leaving the stitches behind. Here's an example of the removal. Uh, I like to use just a little bit of warm water that seems to help speed up the process. Now, if you aren't into that whole process, you can also use a water soluble or heat erasable pen to actually draw your design onto the fabric, making it easy to remove marks. If you make any mistakes, I use these from Joann's or these are Frixon heat erasable pens. You just remove the marks with a hairdryer. Both are great. Before we get going on stitching, we also need to assess if we think it's going to be beneficial for us to use a hoop. For thinner fabrics, I do recommend it, but heavier fabrics may do better with that one. We already have the stability we need, and that way we can see how the stitches are going to feel on the clothes in real time. But regardless, if you're going to use a hoop, make sure it is one of excellent quality. We also want to make sure that we're using the right stitches for the job. Now long and short stitch, commonly known as thread painting, is great for clothes, but the elements that sit directly on top of the fabric, like when you do a woven wheel rose or a French knot, they can snag. So how do we fix that? Well, we're going to add some anchoring stitches for stability. Here's a little clip of me working on a thicker denim jacket without a hoop, and I'm adding French knots because I love the look of them, but I want to make sure they last a long time. So after I anchor the knot, I'm going to go back in at another point and make another stitch to make sure that it is secure. And then to make doubly sure, I'm going to run my floss under a couple anchoring stitches on the back before I move on to the next knot. Now, if we did end up deciding to stitch in a hoop, again, we wanna make sure we have one that is of great quality. And we wanna make sure that when we put our piece into the hoop, it isn't too tight. The tighter the hoop is in this case, the higher the risk you have of leaving marks behind from the hardware at the top in particular. When you put your fabric in the hoop, if you're feeling a lot of resistance, stop and loosen the hoop more. I have actually ripped clothes using a hoop before on thin fabric, so make sure you're being careful. I won't lie to you. It is so sad. And if you're planning on stitching more than an hour, I also recommend using a thin strip of fabric around the outer hoop to add additional protection to your piece. And always make sure that you take it out of the hoop when you're done stitching. Now, when we've finished a section, it can be a good idea to add another type of stabilizer to the back of the piece to protect the stitches on the back side. They make sew-in or heat bonded stabilizer, which is really great, but 
If you're going to use heat bonded, make sure you're ready and really focus and read the instructions because it's a permanent bond. Both of these have their pros and cons, but I do tend to lean towards the heat bonded because I think it protects the stitches best. And especially if I'm going to like accidentally throw it in the washing machine, that's what I trust to help protect the stitches better. They come in different thicknesses, so you can choose the one most comfortable for your upcycle creations and just help a lot. Thanks so much and happy upcycling. These stabilizers also come in different thicknesses, so you can choose the one the most comfortable for your upcycle creation. Thanks so much and happy upcycling.